Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Brittany. And this, this is, is NF Geeks. Geeks. All right. So uh, for today's uh, episodes, we have a bunch of ENFJ episodes uh, to send forth. And um, it's really great because we're going to see multiple ENFJs, or at least, well, two. <laughs> but that makes, a, right, yeah. that makes a multiple. But that's good, but it's also male, female, so there's great sort of compare and contrast going on uh, between the ENFJs. And you can compare that to our other ENFJ video uh, of Dan. We'll probably come back too to talk about these. So we have a whole sort of ENFJ dialectical mm -hmm. thing going on with the ENFJs with each other. Nice. Yes. So, um, all right. So, what I want to talk to you, Brittany, is about some things that, um, first of all, some things that ENFJs are just kind of known for. Okay. And then, how do you feel that you represent NF? Okay. That's sort of the, the goal today. So, the first thing is a, a stereotype of ENFJs, um, and this isn't a bad one. Um, oh boy. is that ENFJs make the best teachers, okay, mm -hmm. and um, in, in, that's, in that way, that they're very good at giving direction, but at the same time genuinely having empathy and care for students, and um, they're probably even better than me, you know, the, you know the, as an ENFP. So, um, first of all, does that resonate with you in any way, or how do you take that comment? I actually am going to school to become a teacher. I would okay. eventually become a teacher. Perfect. What kind of teacher? Um, I'm not 100% sure yet because I want to go a really roundabout way of doing it because I don't want to just go to school and then be a teacher because I find that really boring and just doesn't make the greatest teacher sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm actually going to end up going for anthropology and English at first ah. and then eventually very, come back around. Very NF majors. And then eventually come around and be a teacher just so I can have more experience with hmm. actual people and not just with the academic standpoint. Sure. Now, when you say teacher, do you mean like a uh, professor, like uh, um, um, academia? I'm thinking maybe eventually a professor. I kind of want to, I think, do a, I want to do too much. <laughs> I want to do a stint for uh, lower grades, but I think like eventually. Like high school? No, not lower high school. Than that? Yeah, I'm not a huge, that age group fan. Okay. But um, I eventually, like uh, elementary schools, and then I want to eventually become a professor. So. Ah, great. That's, that's perfect for ENFJ. Um, actually. Um, all right, uh, so now uh, so let me do a second stereotype, and this one's a more um, negative one, but it's mm -hmm. kind of comical, and that is, is that ENFJs are kind of, uh, an ENFJ gone wrong <laughs> is uh, sort of notorious for being sort of a cult leader. Like, all the best cult leaders are ENFJs. And I used to talk about this with Dan, and that the difference between, say, like, um, another type, and I have a specific type in mind, but I already got yelled at about this. But a different type between different type and an ENFJ is that there's certain types that are cult leaders, but they know it's bullshit, and they're just trying to make money or something. <laughs> Whereas the ENFJ actually believes totally whatever the crazy thing is. Yes, Jesus is landing with a flying saucer, and the <laughs> Muhammad will be with them. You know, it'll be crazy. You know, whatever yeah. the thing is. So, how does that stick with you as an ENFJ? Um, I can see that because, like, if I get an idea in my head, it is the complete truth. Ah. No matter, like, people can try to talk me out of it, but I'll always believe it until I'm proven wrong. Ah. Now, and do you attempt to uh, evangelize this truth, like get everybody in on it? No, I, I talk about people and people end up believing it. Mm. And you make people believe it yes. for whatever reason. That's but, very ENFJ. Dance like that. Dance does a great job. But it's not always the truth. And like even sometimes I'll realize how ridiculous it is, whatever I am saying is. And I'll see that the person is still believing it and going, yeah, yeah, I can believe And I'm like, wait a minute, this is not true. So I'm like, oh, never mind, I'm just, no. <laughs> do you still believe it on some level? Um, I think at some level I probably do, but I, at some other level I just realize how crazy it is, and I'm just amused that somebody is completely believing it, I think. Ah, well, that's, that's very common. <laughs> All right, um, so what I want to do uh, now is kind of talk about some... Uh, some NF values, and I'd like to talk about how, and, and orientations, and how you uh, represent them, or how, what they, what you think of them, if they, if they, how they come through you, or, or whatever interpretation you have okay. um, about them. So, um, the first one is that, um, and I've talked about this a lot with an INFJ that I'm sort of having a um, correspondence with, and that is all NFs sort of have a connection to the mystical or the, uh, the metaphysical, or sort of the, um, the world behind the world, if you will, in some way or another. Okay. And um, I want to know if that, if, if that connects with you in any way. You know? it, it does, some expects, like I have feelings about things a lot that prove to end up being true, or 
mostly mostly all the time true and um, I find sometimes I try to like think about it too much and be like no it can't be this because it's just some I know it for some whatever reason and uh, it's always ends up being true even if I try to talk myself out of it really? like I can I want to say read people really well but like people's intentions constantly and like what people are going to do sometimes I don't know if it's just because I know the people or well but that happens all the time hmm all right, that's, that, that's, that resonates with me. You know, I've, I've talked about this, I think, in other NF Geeks, but the other ENFJ I know, Dan, um, and he's done, he even did this recently. Um, I would be thinking about something, uh, you know, in, in, in my mind, and he would immediately call me mm. and then start talking about what I was thinking without us actually yeah. having the previous conversation. Like, I might not talk to him for days or weeks, and I'm thinking about something. He talks, and now he's talking about what I was just thinking about. Like, he's done that a bunch of times. Yeah. Does that connect with you that in any way? It happens all the time, whether it's like at work even or with just friends I haven't seen in forever. All of a sudden we'll start talking and then all of a sudden it'll come up and they'll be like, well, I was just thinking about that like the other day or like earlier and it happens very frequently. Oh, great. Yeah. All right. Um, another um, orientation that NFs have is about um, the future. And we're kind of criticized about this from the other types. Uh, but our view of the future is kind of credulous. Uh, this is uh, a Kiersey term. Uh, that's a guy who writes about this. Um, meaning that we kind of have this sort of over-ideal version of the future, whether it's our personal future or future of humanity or whatever, that we kind of, you know, everything's going to be great with rainbows and uh, flying cupcakes and, you know, it's just going to be fantastic. Um, does that connect with anyone personally or in a much larger view? Yeah, I think I kind of think about the future an immense amount. It's just I, I try to perfect everything in my mind of how it's going to be and how it's going to play out or what's going to happen. And then I find like sometimes though I, I forget about now what's mm. happening. And it's just like I'm so far in the future with just like how everything has to work out or everything. And then if it doesn't happen, I get very disappointed. Ah, is this? Are you speaking of like your personal life, like your goals? Yeah. In your life? Or just things in general. It's like I, I assume things, I want and assume things are going to go a certain way because I thought about it so much and this is how it's going to play out. Hmm. And it never does. Oh, <laughs> It's very sad. That's too bad. Yes. You know, maybe you need to develop your, your judging function You're a little <laughs> better there. You know, but that's okay. I'm sure it's fine. Um, all right. Another um, important um, aspect of NF is uh, authenticity. Okay. And that's sort of a vague word in I've had hard times even describing it, but um, authenticity is a big watchword for NFs, particularly ENFPs. That's probably one of our strongest ones. So, uh, I want, how, what does that word mean to you, and how are you authentic, and how do you see it in others or not see it in others? Can you speak about that? Um, I try really hard to be just completely true to myself. Now, it's like I am very disappointed a lot because everything's so superficial, and I just try to like try to find. Authentic authenticity in anything. I can't speak today. Um, and I don't know. I I guess I, I have a vision of who I want to be, and I'm just trying to get there all the time. And I don't think I can. I don't know. I really don't know <laughs> that one. But okay. I'm just kind of confused about authenticity sometimes. I think just these days, maybe. All know. right. Sure. All right. Well, let's talk about that then a little bit. Um, is the is the question. Let's see how this connects. Is it a question of running into inauthenticity and having to deal with that? Yeah. Or not being able to tell whether something's authentic or not? I can usually tell. I can tell when something's authentic or not. But it's just like I feel many times I'm just, I just run into things that very aren't authentic at all. Hmm. And it's confusing. Can, can you give an times. example? Um, I think just like the way people interact with each other. I, I've noticed it's just everything about it is fake and mm. and I, I try I, I'm horrible at small talk and I, oh, cause I think small talk I know horrible. that's come up a lot of times with the yeah. NFs if you've been paying attention and I, I try to talk to people and I always want to go on a deeper level just because I want them to know something about me and I want to know actually something per, like about them because I love just learning about the individual mm -hmm. and who they are like a good NF and it's very Difficult sometimes because all people want to do is small talk. I'm like, no, I want to know you. No. Oh. I just want to know you. No. Oh. Right. <laughs> Can you see, see the NF depression going on? Even any NFJs, you know, it's funny. That's the. It, this, this always, I'm always fascinated by the commonalities of NFs, mm. you know, even though we have very different styles. 
um, there's always a, a, a commonality going on. Oh. There we go. Um, all right. Uh, another important, and this always comes up with NFs, is the issue of empathy. Um, NFs having empathy. I've talked about this with Brad many times. Uh, um, what, um, how does that connect to your life and experiences of empathy? I'm like the therapist to everybody. Hmm. Well, that's a, <laughs> all right. Before you continue, um, I actually have uh, I've heard of and known quite a few ENFJ therapists. Mm -hmm. Um, so that might be a secondary thing to think about. I used about. to want to be a counselor. I was in human really? services at first. Wow. Yeah. I actually have a bachelor's degree in social work. Then I realized that I, I would want to help more than I could because it's so restricted. Like That's that. exactly the attitude that I arrived at actually being in the field for almost a decade. Oh. Yeah. So I actually uh, arrived at that same conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. Very NF conclusion. Um, I think that has to do because we're idealistic and we yeah. want to like fix the world. Yeah. Not just cope with the world. You know, and that kind of. I don't want to say, down. "Oh, it'll be better." I want to make it better. Right, oh, boy, <laughs> that's not NF. I don't know. I don't know what is. Um, what else about empathy that comes up for? Um, I just I can always tell when somebody is feeling something, like whether if they're upset or just any type of emotion, and I always try to talk to people about it. I it goes again with the therapist. Like all my friends know, they'll come to me all the time if they need to talk about anything or if they just need to let go of some sort of emotion at all. And for some reason, I'm always that person. Hmm. Wow. All right, that makes sense um, as, an, as an NF. Um, another issue um, with NFs is around identity um, that comes up. I know that's a big ENFP mm -hmm. issue. We're always wrestling with that perpetually. Um, how, does, how do you, as an ENFJ, um, wrestle with or construct that issue of identity? I've actually been thinking about that a lot. Um, I, I know who I want to be, but every time I get there, it's something else I want to be or, sure. or something more I want to be. So I'm like in this perpetual circle of this is who I am, this is who I can be, and just like a complete circle, and I feel like I never get there. Um, um, that actually uh, connects with me because I've, I've known you for a little while now, and uh, there's something you've talked about um, in terms of the two Britneys. Oh. <laughs> if you could uh, expand on that's because uh, that sounds that seems very similar about identity. An issue of identity. Uh, past Britney sucks. Okay. <laughs> so first of all, we have to identify the two Britneys. What are the two Britneys? There's past Britney and future Britney. Okay. And what is their relationship? Um, they hate each other. They hate each other. Yeah. There's seems. hate. There's, there's, there's hate there. Oh, right. Oh, Mutual yeah. hate. Mutual hate. Right. And um, how does, the, how, what's, can you characterize the identity of, of each of these or how this, how this affects your overall identity? Past Britney is really lazy. And uh, put stuff off to the very, very last minute constantly. Mm. It's like, oh no, I'll do it later and it'll be good. Because I feel past Britney thinks future Britney works better under stress. Mm. And what is uh, present uh, uh, Britney? Present Britney? Yeah. Present Britney is just going. <laughs> present Britney knows past Britney sucks, but it's like, it's okay. It'll all be okay in the end. Ah, okay. So is there any incorporation going on? Is there any kind of synthesis between the two Britneys? Or any hope of synthesis? Um, I don't think so. No, I didn't think so either, to be honest. <laughs> I already knew the answer. I don't, I don't even, why did I even ask that? I don't, I don't. Past Britney likes procrastinating too much. Ah. It's really bad. Okay, that, that's all right. Um, also, I want to point out, and this is going to make the NTs groan, I think, is that is, um, NF sort of have this non-linear experience of time, <laughs> yeah. okay, and that somehow in your consciousness you're sort of traveling back and forth in time Yeah. a little bit, does it? Can you talk about that? Does it feel like that? Um, I, I know for me at least, it's like I, I think about all possible solutions sometimes mm -hmm. and I'll like play them all out in my head, so within a five minute period I'll have played out like hours just thinking mm. of how things can go every single way and also just time doesn't mean anything to me mm. <laughs> at all. That's a very NF position. It's, it doesn't, I, I don't find its use most times. I, it's just there. Hmm. So I don't pay attention to time. Ah. Oh. Oh. friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, we're almost done. Uh, so, Brittany, I'm going to give you the last word. What are some things you'd like to say to the audience or just say about this experience or anything about NFness? I just want to be loved. Oh, <laughs> see? That's not NF, said. I don't what. That's what NF is all about. <laughs> Wanting to be loved, right? That's a yes. good segue to the next uh, episode. So, all right, Britt, thank you very thank much you. for coming on.